Hello, ladies and gentlemen. A huge welcome back to everyone to the special weekend edition of Markets Around the World. My name is K2, and as usual, we'll be covering everything from the latest data and macro news stories to the key levels you need to be watching. If you love markets like we do, remember to subscribe and educate yourself on how these markets actually work together. So, let's talk about what happened in the market and the outlook as well. Let's expand the conversation, starting with the news. NVIDIA Corp shares stalled at high altitude this week, leaving investors to ponder whether the S&P 500 and NASDAQ composite are poised for a major setback if the ringleader of an increasingly concentrated cohort of market winners sees a sustained stumble. Mathematically, given that it's the largest stock in the U.S. market, if it goes down, the market kind of has to go down. It's hard to imagine you get a big downturn in one stock while everything else is looking great. There's no guarantee that a slide for NVIDIA, 3.22%, would spell big-time pain for the broader indexes, particularly if it's met by rotation into left-behind sectors, a phenomenon that would be enhanced if those areas of the market begin to play catch-up when it comes to earnings. The U.S. economy is showing signs of softening, Minneapolis Federal Reserve Bank President Neil Kashkari said Thursday. Speaking to the Michigan Bankers Association, Kashkari noted some evidence of softening, but emphasized the economy's overall strength and sound fundamentals. Predicting the economy's future is challenging, he said. Regarding interest rates, Kashkari echoed other Fed officials, stating, it depends on what happens with the economy. Persistent inflation would mean higher rates for longer while falling inflation would allow quicker normalization. Kashkari expects it will take a year or two to reach the Fed's 2% inflation target, aligning with the median Fed forecast. Earlier this week, he indicated that interest rate cuts are unlikely until December. The U.S. economy expanded in June at the fastest pace in over two years, according to S&P surveys. The S&P Flash U.S. Services Index rose to 55.1% and the manufacturing PMI increased to 51.7. Numbers above 50 indicate growth. New orders and employment levels increased in May, while price hikes slowed to a four-year low. This slowdown aids the Federal Reserve's 2% inflation goal. Despite a slight slowdown after strong growth in late 2023, the surveys show little sign of trouble. Optimism among businesses is rising, due to easing inflation and potential lower borrowing costs later this year. The Fed may cut interest rates by fall if inflation continues to decline. Bill Adams of Comerica noted that slow and steady growth supports gradual rate cuts in the second half of 2024. Home sales fell for the third consecutive month as buyers faced limited listings and soaring prices. Sales activity dropped to its lowest level since January 2024, despite home prices reaching a new record high. Unsold inventory also rose to its highest level since June 2020. The National Association of Realtors reported that sales of previously owned homes fell by 0.7% in May to an annual rate of 4.11 million, exceeding Wall Street's forecast of 4.08 million. The numbers are seasonally adjusted. The number of Americans applying for unemployment benefits fell slightly last week, but new jobless claims remained near a 10-month high possibly due to the end of the school year. New claims declined to 238,000 from 243,000 the previous week, the highest since August 2023. This pattern, seen after the school year ends, may be repeating as some states allow certain education workers to apply for benefits when school ends. Labor demand has cooled, suggesting early signs of stress in the strong job market. Economists believe it will take another month of data to get a clearer picture. Economists polled by the Wall Street Journal had forecast 235,000 new claims for the week ending June 15th. New jobless claims fell in 38 of the 53 states and territories that report to the federal government. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's expand the conversation on macro data that I want to show you. We'll begin with this. The market has gone 377 days over a year without a 2% sell-off. This is the longest period of time since 2008. Even more interesting is that there hasn't been a 2% update during this time either. Volatility has been destroyed both up and down. U.S. bankruptcies are rising rapidly. 
275 large companies have filed for bankruptcy through May of this year, the second highest count since 2010. Only 2023 had more bankruptcy filings in the last 14 years, with 277 reported. In May 2024 alone, 62 firms have gone bankrupt, marking the third highest monthly total since 2020. Many bankruptcies are occurring among consumer discretionary companies as Americans cut back on spending. Notably, Red Lobster has recently filed for bankruptcy. These trends indicate increasing economic weakness. What's the probability of a recession within the next 12 months? According to the Fed model using the U.S. Treasury yield curve, there is a 52% chance of a recession over the next year. This is down from the peak of 71% recorded in May 2023. Historically, over the last 40 years, whenever this probability has exceeded 30%, the U.S. economy has entered a recession within two years. Meanwhile, the yield curve has been inverted for over 700 days, marking the longest stretch in history. Achieving a soft landing may still prove challenging. Short interest in S&P 500, SPY, and NASDAQ 100, QQQ ETFs, has reached a six-year low. Since 2023, short interest as a percentage of shares outstanding has dropped by over 50%. Meanwhile, the volatility index, VX, has decreased by 40% since January 2023. Despite the fastest interest rate hike cycle on record, volatility remains near historic lows. Market risk appetite appears to be at an all-time high. U.S. technology funds received a record $9 billion inflow last week, the largest ever recorded. The previous high was around $8.5 billion in Q1 2023. According to Bank of America, the Long Magnificent 7 has been the most crowded trade for 15 consecutive months. As a result, these companies now exceed a $15 trillion market cap for the first time in history and represent a record 32% of the S&P 500. Is the tech trade becoming too crowded? The last data I want to show you guys is, Central banks were recently asked about their reasons for buying gold. Their responses, while not surprising, were reassuring. Almost 50% of respondents cited three main reasons. No default risk. Strong performance during crises. Historical significance. In reality, no other asset matches gold's neutrality, resilience, and centuries-long role as a monetary alternative. It's remarkable that gold still has one of its lowest global allocations in history, despite significant debt and fiscal irresponsibility. Market and asset allocations follow long-term cycles, and current conditions present one of the best opportunities to invest in metals that I've ever seen. Let's delve into what happened in the big casino last week. We begin with the heat map. Microsoft MSFT was up 1.86%. Adobe Adby rose by 16%. Amazon, AMZN, gained almost 3% for the week, while NVIDIA, NVDA, and Apple, APL, were down 3%. Tesla, TSLA, remained flat. The financial sector ETF, XLF, Consumer Staples ETF, XLP, and Consumer Discretionary ETF, XLY, showed overall gains last week, contrasting with the technology sector ETF, XLK, and healthcare sector ETF, XLV. Let's take a look at Fear and Greed Index. The Fear and Greed Index remains at 41, despite the market reaching new all-time highs. This discrepancy is somewhat concerning. Here are the most anticipated earnings for this week. The most important ones will be FedEx and Nike. If you didn't know, the next earnings season is less than a month away, so buckle up. Let's expand the conversation and take a look at some charts. We'll start with the SPX, S&P 500, daily time frame. 2021 versus 2024. The market has been steadily climbing higher despite deteriorating breadth. This suggests underlying weakness. However, history shows several past instances where prices continued to rise for months despite similar conditions, such as in 2021. The target is set at 6,000. Here's another way to illustrate the puzzling divergence happening right now. The stock market is climbing, yet breadth indicators are declining. This situation typically signals volatility ahead, regardless of the direction. And here's another bull case for SPX. If you're interested in these futures charts, you can subscribe to my Telegram channel. I post more often and provide additional information there. The next chart I want to show you guys is the NDX daily chart. The daily RSI is now at 80, a level that has historically led to increased volatility. 
Fun times ahead. The NASDAQ's intraday range has been suppressed for several months, currently sitting at 0.5%. What should we expect next? Volatility. Historically, recent volatility has typically resulted in downward moves. However, before the 2000 peak, the NDX regularly experienced plus 2% daily moves. This version clarifies the current situation with the NASDAQ's intraday range and provides historical context regarding volatility trends. And this is the last chart for the show, the bull case chart for NDX. If we don't enter a recession, my thesis stands. Now isn't the time to short the market. It's time to wait for confirmation. Everyone wants to be the next Michael Burry, but those opportunities are rare. And here are the key events for the week. On Monday, there are no important news events. On Tuesday, CB Consumer Confidence will be released. Wednesday brings new home sales. Thursday includes GDP and initial jobless claims. Lastly, on Friday, we have the core PCE price index. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for this weekend's video. If you found value in this video, please like, subscribe, and share it with others. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye for now. Talk to you later.